Hello everyone. So uh, here I am. I've come to visit with my uncle. Just a couple more days in Bangkok and then back to Canada. And there'll be lots more good things to come. Uh, I just thought, you know, it's been a while since I've actually given any sort of teaching over YouTube, so I thought a uh, good time to have something to fill in the gap. Well, people are waiting patiently for my Dhammapada video updates and so on and so on. I've been thinking a lot lately about um, the solution to the big problems in the world. In Thailand now they have big problems and uh, there's a lot of talk even among meditators and Buddhists about how to fix the problems. And it's it got me thinking about some of the bigger issues of uh, the paths that people are on, like what you want out of, out of the world, out of life, out of existence, as well as the ways that you go about to get it, to, uh, to achieve your goals. And I think uh, in the end that's what it comes down to, these, the answers to these two questions. One, where are you going? And two, uh, what are you doing or how do you get there? What are you doing to get there? How do you get there? What do you do to achieve your goals? And so I thought I'd do a video to, to describe this because it applies um, to the Thai situation. But you know, that, that would be the reason why I've been thinking about it. The, the, this video, the idea here is to apply the principles on a wider scale. Now, uh, the reason it's been on my mind, or the reason that this video idea came to mind is sort of a realization of how important it is to not only do good deeds for yourself, but to also encourage other people in good deeds. So it, it, it awoke this uh, desire to help others. Again, uh, I thought you know, this, is, this kind of thought is important to get out there. It's important to remind people and to encourage each other in the practice of goodness. So that, that this, this video is for that purpose. Um, I've thought also to do one in Thai, which I may uh, undertake as well. I don't know how many Thai followers I have, but the, the original impetus was to address the Thai situation because there's a lot of people trying to, to address the issue. So life, life throws us a problem. How do we solve it? How do we go? What do we focus on? And in this case, um, many people are focusing on the political situation, trying to solve the political crisis, trying to arrange so that um, their favorite person can start running things or their favorite people or so that things can be run in a way that they would like and so that the country can be run in a certain way so we, we put our focus on a country for example our focus goes on, on many different things our focus might be on our family or it might be on our religion it, uh, it's often on the country it might be on our job or, or it might be on um, on the environment or on science, it might be on knowledge and learning and so on, it might be on gaining magical powers, wherever our focus might be. Um, expanding this idea, it, it's clear that everyone has, or, or in general people have their focus. And so this is the answering the first question is, what is our focus? What do we want out of life? And I think this is an important question that people have to be able to answer and uh, oftentimes we we fall into a problem right from the start here because we focus on the wrong things or we focus on things that um, have a limited benefit or result and so when when we approach the first the, the first um, issue is to ask ourselves why why are we focusing on on X Y or Z and uh, what is the result that comes from focusing on that? So, for example, if your focus is on the political, uh, the political situation, the question is, by focusing on that, what comes? And for many people, all that has come is stress, um, 
violence and uh, anger, frustration, sadness, a lot of bad things. And, and people in Thailand, for example, are quite stressed at this point. Even people who are generally uh, strong meditators have, be have given up their meditation, have found themselves unable to relax, unable to calm down, unable to focus, unable to see clearly, and so find themselves getting upset easily. So clearly we see here, in my, in my mind, a improper uh, focus. So uh, their um, path or, the, or their, their, uh, the direction that they're heading is problematic, is causing problems for them and, and, and is, is instigating the problems in the world. So it's creating more conflict. We have, we have, in a general sense, we have this all over the world. Um, if it's not politics, then people are focusing on worldly gain, for example. Many people, even spiritual people, find themselves focusing on how to uh, acquire a material or worldly gain or even heavenly gains. So people are always obsessed with how they can get more. A lot of spiritual practices in the West especially are particularly, no, even in the East, really all around the world, here in Thailand as well, are particularly focused on how I can, what spiritual practices can I do in order to increase my affluence, in order to create, increase my wealth, my physical uh, comfort. And, you know, not only does this seem quite crass, but, but, so if we go along with it, we can still ask, okay, so once you get the affluence, what, what really have you done? If you look, look at your own benefit, you've spoiled your mind, you've corrupted your mind, and all, all you have left is this incredible need for comfort and luxury that never satisfies you, and in the end leaves you uh, rotten inside and spoiled inside and, and whining and complaining about the smallest um, disruption. And when you die, you die less satisfied than most. Uh, and, and then for the world as well, the problem with affluence is that you take from other people. You end up stealing, and, 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 or, or not even stealing, but using uh, resources that other people could use, and you wind up destroying the environment, and you, you polluting the world, and so on. Affluence is not sustainable, and it's not something that you can spread around to everyone. So, meaning in general, this path is not something that leads to greatness. It's not something that leads to any purpose or, or benefit. So you have to ask yourself, why? Um, I, I think the, the, the closest that people get while still missing the point is, for example, here in Thailand, some people have talked to me about the idea of putting good people in charge and how important it is to make sure bad people don't get in charge of, say, the country. I think that still misses the point. Uh, if we're trying to um, create systems, for example, we want to change capitalist systems to be socialist systems or socialist systems to be capitalist systems or, or whatever we believe in, we're still dealing with a entity that is, and here's the point, outside of our sphere of influence, outside of our universe. So when, we, when I think of Thailand, most of Thailand is nothing to me and never will be anything to me. Uh, I will have nothing to do with and have no control over, have no influence over even. Much of Thailand is, is just conceptual to me. So when I conceive of Thailand, I've extended myself out of reality into uh, conceptualization. And so I've got all these ideas about what Thailand is and, and what's going on in this part and that part and, and so many variables that are outside of my control that for example, this eventually, this if if I were to take Thailand as my focus, uh, all I would end up with is stress and suffering when when things didn't go my way. I don't think it's proper for us to just say focus on yourself, which I think is the general Buddhist response: is that okay? So you can't fix the world, you can't even fix the country. So instead, only focus on. Uh, doing good deeds for yourself. And a lot of other people have said this to me. They said, you know, look, I've, I've realized I can't help Thailand, for example, but I can do something for myself. So what I have to do is just make myself, uh, free myself from suffering, free myself from the problems. And I think not only is that, you could say, selfish, but even if you accept it and say, great, okay, go for it, I think it's, uh, uh, it's unsustainable. And it... It, it, it doesn't work in practice. Why? 
because you do have a universe that surrounds you. It won't be Thailand or it won't be the world or it won't even be necessarily your family or your society, your town, whatever. But it will be a universe that surrounds you. It will be certain people who come into your life and of course when they leave your life you consider them out of your universe. Uh, but it will be these people that surround you and if you're not influencing them I would say your own personal practice is of course bound to suffer bound to, to, to in fact fail because of the influence of these other people and, and, and other aspects of your universe I say that's crucial is that the path that we should take if I'm going to give an answer to this first question what should our focus be it should be on our universe and we should understand clearly what that means it means first and foremost ourselves, but second it means all of that which surrounds us, which changes, but uh, also has some stability to it. For example, our friends and the people who we consider to be in line with our views, we should be not only improving our own situation, but we should also be improving their situation. And uh, the means of improvement that I would suggest and that I think is in line with the Buddhist teaching is the cultivation of what we call goodness in its many forms so it doesn't just mean meditation it doesn't mean we just force everyone or push everyone or push ourselves to meditate it means we cultivate goodness uh, in ourselves and in the, the world around us so we are generous generous with ourselves but generous with other people we're kind we are moral and ethical we are considerate and alert and, and aware of our actions and our speech. We are present, uh, we are mindful, we are wise, uh, we are patient, we, are, we cultivate all of these good qualities, um, not just by meditation but by acts and speech that are mindful, thoughtful, uh, considerate and, and, and kind and so on. Uh, I think with that as our focus, there is so much good that we can do in the world. And the problem often is not that uh, we don't have the, p the power to do good, but that we waste a lot of our energy uh, on things that are useless. We, for example, fighting, protesting, um, etc., etc. And, and of course, in sensual indulgence and, uh, and so on. And if we were to just take time out of our days to, to cultivate goodness, do good deeds, practice meditation, um, cultivate morality, patience, and all of these good qualities. Um, I, I, I think there, there's so much change that could come about in the world. I think immediately our universe would change. And I suppose that's really the point, is that you can't change the world. You can't change the universe. Everything changes and comes and goes this earth is going to be destroyed. Anyone who is, is clinging to the idea of, of helping this earth is, is, is uh, in for great disappointment when eventually the earth burns to a crisp and, and is destroyed by the power of the sun, etc. Uh, and, and so is living a short-sighted dream. And in fact, if we want to find an ultimate good, we have to look beyond the physical realm, beyond the physical earth. So this is the answer to the first question, sort of in brief, the, the practice of cultivation of goodness both for ourselves and others. That's my answer. Now the answer as to how we go about this, there's many, many ways of answering this. And I think probably my favorite one, because it's so general, is what the Buddha called the four roads to success, or the four idipada, which are the four paths to power or success or magic even, if you want. Uh, idi, which means really just power. But success, the meaning is if you want to succeed at anything, you need these four things. So here we are, we have this idea of choosing our path, and with any path you choose, in order to succeed, I would say this is the answer. How do you succeed? How do you go about cultivating uh, your, your path? Follow these four qualities. The first one is uh, contentment or uh, desire, I suppose, or contentment, somewhere between contentment and desire, meaning uh, being happy with what you're doing, being content to do what you're doing. So if you're not content with goodness, if your contentment lies in sensuality, for example, you're content to indulge and to eat and to, 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 to greed, um, then 
the cultivation of goodness suffers as a result because your contentment lies elsewhere. If you're content to work really hard, or you're content, or your 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 uh, volition, you're zealous towards um, politics or or um, science or, or study or, or whatever, then uh, you'll succeed in that direction. So the first thing is for us to succeed in the cultivation of goodness is to be content to cultivate goodness. We should, and, and I think this comes from the first discussion. So the start, this is where the start is to decide on a path. So when you discuss the virtues of various paths, it leads you to, to make a decision on the path and therefore be content with it. As a result of deciding that this is the best path, you become content with that path. The second thing you need then, or what, what even comes from contentment, is effort. Once you're content, you've chosen your path. The second road to success, the Buddha said, is you need to work. So it's not enough that you have decided this is the right path and it's your philosophy in life. It has to become your religion, which means you have to take it seriously and actually practice it. And this requires effort. So if we're going to, here today I'm coming to encourage you in this, and in order to encourage you, I have to encourage you to actually go out and do good things. It doesn't mean you have to go out and become Mother Teresa or, or the, the Buddhist equivalent or you have to go running around finding people to meditate or, or, or working all the time stressing out about it. But it means that you have to actually do something. So you, you want to do this, take the effort, take the decision and go and do things. Be generous, be kind, share the meditation practice with others, uh, send links about meditation practice and Buddhism and, and goodness of, of any kind all around the world. Do what you can to spread good things. Also to yourself. Have the effort to sit down and meditate. Have the effort to mm, change some things about yourself that you don't like, that you wish weren't there. Cultivate. Actually go about cultivating good things. The third thing that you need is what we call citta, which means you have to keep it in mind. So if you want to do this, you are putting out the effort to do it. Uh, the effort has to be focused. And the, this third aspect is the focusing of the mind, keep reminding yourself. So it's you have this effort, you have this enthusiasm, but then the enthusiasm gets carried away with something else, or it gets diffused, or um, it, it uh, doesn't find an outlet because you've forgotten all about what you're intending to do. You've gone off and, and gotten lost in something else. So jitta means keeping it in mind. In anything that you do in order to succeed, it has to be something that you are constantly keep, is constantly in mind. It's at the forefront of your mind. So there's various ways of doing this. We, you can have artificial means as far as surrounding yourself with good people or, or writing down little reminders or putting in your, your, your book. You know, business people will have a, a, a day planner that reminds them when they have to do certain things. So we can have a day planner for good things, reminding ourselves. You can have artificial means, but most important is just remind yourself or, or, or put a deter have a determination in your mind to do these sorts of things that, that once a day or, or ask yourself today have I done anything good or, or what sorts of good things am I going to do and really think about it and consider uh, keeping keep in mind in your daily life don't just live your life the point is don't just live your life for the uh, attainment of sensual pleasures or for the busyness of, of work and, and, and relationships and, and so on and so on. Take some time out to actually change your world, to actually cultivate goodness inside of yourself and goodness in the people around you. This is number three. And finally, number four, you have to be wise about what you do. So for some people, they put their minds on, they set their minds on something and they work really hard at it, but because they're not uh, reflecting on, on whether they're doing it properly, or efficiently, or, or um, whether you know in the correct way, correctly, uh, they fail even though they put out lots and lots of effort. So there's this, in um, there was this picture of people pushing cubes around, and working really hard pushing these cubes around, and then somebody comes by with a sphere, and with very little, with even less effort, because he's turned it into a sphere, it's it's much easier. It's not about how hard you work. But the fourth one, vimangsa, means considering the right ways to do things and the wrong ways to do things and adjusting your practice. So for in the example of, of practicing goodness, people might work really hard to um, help 
poor people, for example. So you go, out, you go running around trying to find beggars on the streets and you give them some money. But after a while you see that by giving money to beggars it doesn't really help the world nor does it help me nor does it, it make my universe a better place because maybe these people go off and just buy alcohol or, or, or maybe it just give, it gives them food and well that's not really the most efficient use of my time so maybe I could teach them meditation or maybe I could teach um, successful people how to meditate and they could spread out and teach others. So this is an example that I've taken, is I'm not really interested in teaching everyone how to meditate, but you pick the best people. This is how the Buddha looked at it. He said, well, I'll pick the very, very best people who are right ready to teach, and if I get all of them uh, advanced in the meditation, then they will then teach the next level, and will teach the next level, and it, it will be much more efficient. In the practice of goodness, it should be this way. Ask yourself, don't, don't just go around doing random acts of kindness. It's a great thing, but in the end, you, you've been inefficient in your practice. You've, you've done many, many good things and still your world is full of, full of hatred and, and full of anger and, and conflict because you haven't addressed the bigger issues, you haven't been efficient in your use of resources, you haven't really hit the, the core issues. So um, when you do your good deeds, focus, uh, or in this, case, in this aspect means um, consider carefully what is the best thing and the most efficient use of your time and your resources? Uh, how can you go about really uh, influencing the world? And one example is the importance of first helping yourself before you help others. So for some people, good deeds, goodness, means running around helping other people or trying to change other people to make them better or to make them conform to your idea of what is right without actually making yourself a better person. So you run around and get angry at people because they're not... Um, because they're, they're not sympathetic or because they're not in harmony and you end up creating disharmony. And, and this happens quite often with NGOs or with, with um, activists and, and people who are trying to change the world in a good way. At the very least they get burnt out but also they often create as much conflict as they try to, uh, to, to appease. So consideration is important. To recap you need to be content with what you do. You need, to, you need to agree with me in this, that we need to create goodness in the world. If, if we can get this far, that we want to create goodness in the world, then we, we've done much to set ourselves in the right direction. But that's not enough. The second thing, you need to put out effort. You have to actually do these things. You have to actually work to create goodness in the world. Number three, you have to keep your mind on it. Remind yourself about it. Keep keep your focus on goodness. Don't focus on the bad things. Don't read the news about how the world is bad in this way and that way. If, if you want to read and make sure, read the headlines and find out what's going on, fine, but don't delve in deeper and try to find exactly who's, uh, who's, the, uh, who's responsible or who's, who's at fault or so on. But cut that out. Focus on the goodness. Focus on cult what can we do, what aspects of the world need help and where can we apply our efforts in our world, in our universe. And number four, consider the best way to do it. Be, cons be, uh, be introspective or, or analytical, analyze, study and be discriminating about where you uh, put your efforts. Try to find the best means uh, or the best um, place to, to put your effort in and try to figure out the most efficient and the most correct and, and uh, useful m means to achieve the end, which is goodness, peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. So there you go. There's a new video from me, and I hope it's been uh, interesting and informative and helpful. And I really, really hope that this is an impetus for people to go out there and do good deeds as far as spreading uh, goodness, spreading the teachings that lead to goodness and spreading peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. So, there you go. Wishing you all the best. Peace. hope that took.